Hello, hello. Thank you for stopping by. I was on vacation last week and I got back home and realized that my incoming bin for pickups has been filled for a couple of weeks now and I was sort of overflowing so I thought I would do a pickups video so I could clear it out and start over. We're going to get started right away. Now, first, before I start showing you the new stuff, I'm going to show you something that I did before. So I've got an old video on this. This is a joystick. It's got one button. It's got actual arcade parts. It's got some buttons on the side. This particular joystick was built specifically for a particular unit. It was built for the C64 mini console, which only needs one button, at least for gameplay. This thing plays tens of thousands of games, to be honest, but it needed a joystick, so I built a project. That brings us to me going through a flea market about a month ago, and I came across a booth, and I think I paid 4 or $5 for it. I found the exact same tin. Now, it's not really a lunchbox. It's, it's kind of too shallow to be a lunchbox, really, or at least it can't hold the thermos. Anyway, I picked up a second one. It was four bucks, and I'm thinking, well, I have the components to make other joysticks, so I figure I'll probably make some more joysticks. Um, interestingly enough, I walked two or three, I don't know, two or three booths past this one, paid $4 for it, and then I found a guy that was selling the exact same shape of tin, and he was selling them for a dollar a piece. So I've got a bazooka bubblegum and a Disney tin, and basically I'm going to figure out how I want to configure the different buttons, and I'm going to build more joysticks. I figured it's a pretty good project. And I have a lot of mini consoles, and it's they're USBs is what they're for. So depending on how many buttons I end up orchestrating, it'll depend on it, that'll make it it'll tell me what system I need to use it for. Um, so I'll try to cram one in for a six button fighting one, and then I'm going to probably try to make one that's usable with the um, Commodore Amiga mini console that I purchased about a month back. So we'll see about that. Oh, actually, that brings me to the second thing. My order. For my original, my original Amiga 500 Mini has come into has come into play. So this is the Amiga Mini that I had purchased on order like a year ago, and while this was on order, I found it for sale in the UK, and I bought it, got it two months early. So I ended up with two. Don't know if I'm going to open this one up right away or just hold on to it for a while. I don't know, but it's a great little system. If anyone has any interest in um, Amiga games, I recommend getting something like this because this was. I think it was 120 bucks. comes with a mouse, comes with a joystick, comes with a stack of games, and they have firmware that they've updated already. You can load your own Amiga games or ROMs if you have them into the system, which is pretty excellent. So this thing is crazy versatile at this stage. So my original order came in. So a friend of mine's moving, and as, as he is moving and cleaning things out, I have been inheriting things. I already had a video, I don't know, about a month back, about a, a, an Atari 400 computer. Well, got a couple more things from that particular friend. Got me a Nintendo GameCube controller, a black controller. Pretty good condition, a little dirty. We'll clean that up like, like usual. But it's always great to get an extra controller. And it's also great to get a wireless controller. Oh my gosh, a GameCube wireless controller. Don't have one of these for sure. This was the era where they didn't really have wireless as a standard yet. So you could buy a few, obviously, um, but they were not commonplace by any means. It wasn't until the next generation of games that came out where they started to go completely wireless all the time. So, you know, I'm happy to get it. I didn't have one. They're not the easiest to find. So happy to give this one a go. It's got different bands, of course. So I guess we'll see if anything interferes with it, but pretty awesome. Happy to get it. Okay, in my travels, I was at, I stopped off at this store. I think I was in Maryland. I could have been in Pennsylvania, but I stopped off at this little arcade store, uh, video game store. I was driving along the highway, and I just turned to my GPS, and I said, retro game stores. And it popped some game stores up, and I just picked the closest one, and I showed up. Got a copy of Blaster Master for like $7, maybe 8 Great game. I mean, we're talking probably one of my top 10 favorite games, and I've been playing it off of other methods. So to get an actual cartridge for it at a price like that, it's fantastic. So, you know, clean game, what's more to like? If I had to pick a top 10, this would have to be in the list. It just, it really would. It's that good. 
So I got a game called Destination Earthstar. I know nothing about it. This one was like four or five bucks. I scooped it up. It's an acclaimed game. I feel I felt like it was at least for that price worth me giving it a try. So we'll see. I was at the flea market and I came across a booth, a table where this guy was selling Nintendo 64 carts. He had a bunch of other stuff there, but he had a small pile of carts. And as I walk up and I'm looking at a cartridge, he goes, I'll sell you all of them for 10 bucks. So I couldn't not get all the games for 10 bucks. It was like seven of them. So that's what we got here. We've got, we're going to start with F1 World Grand Prix. Okay. I don't really care much for the true-to-life racing games, but for that price, how could I not get it? Most of these games appear to be prior rentals, but for the most part, they've been cleaning up really well. Some of the things won't come off, but I got most of the ink off, so I'm feeling like they're pretty clean for the most part. Anyway, F1 Racing. Also got Twisted Edge Extreme Snowboarding. Well, snowboarding was a new thing back in the 90s, really, and I know there were some great games on the PlayStation. We'll see how they worked for the Nintendo 64, I guess. NASCAR 99. There are some people that really love NASCAR out there. I can't say that I'm one of them. However, price, like I said. And who knows, maybe it's a decent racing game. Mia Ham Soccer 64. I don't understand the naming convention of putting a 64 after everything. I think that's kind of lame, but... Here we are 20 years after the system's been released, so who knows. Maybe it was cool back then and nobody noticed. I'm not a huge fan of soccer. However, sports game, if it's any good, maybe I'll give it a play. Got a copy of Lego Racers. Okay, kart racer game based on Lego franchise. All right, seems reasonable. Lego was sort of coming into their own in the 90s during this time anyway. They were starting to uh, actually get popular again, which was kind of neat. Got a copy of Robotron 64. I've seen some videos on this, other people talking about it. Uh, arcade style shooter, you know, based on an original property from what 1983 maybe. So it'll be interesting to give this one a try. Some people seem to like it a lot. Probably one of the most exciting ones out of the list, I think, is probably Wave Race 64. I've never played this, but there's a channel that I follow, Ask the Cheese Gaming. I'll put that in the description. Uh, he does Time Trial Tuesdays, and he's done Wave Race a few times, and it looks like it's a lot of fun. So. Happy to get this in the collection. Definitely give it a try. Uh, great to get such a clean copy, too. And really, this one's probably the cleanest out of the whole pile. So that's that's pretty great. Now, there were two games that I had put up videos on the last two weeks. These were games that were actually pretty new to the collection as well. I don't think I'd mention them. Got a copy of Infiltrate by Apollo. I already posted this one up a couple weeks back. Um, great looking cart, I think. Not that great of a game. You know, I was not that excited with it. It just didn't do much for me. But still, awesome looking game. It's just got this awesome sort of early 80s, late 70s action figure vibe to it, I think. Anyway, so. Well, another Apollo game for the collection. Now, what did surprise me was a Milton Bradley game called Survival Run. This thing was great. I mean, my review went up, I think, a week ago, and this one's great. I, 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 I was really blown away by how interesting this one was. It was far... I didn't even know what to expect. I pop, when I pop in a new Atari 2600 game, I never know what I'm going to be getting, right? So you just pop it in and see what it's like. This one really exceeded what I what I would have assumed uh, the game was going to be about, um, and it was actually a lot of fun. So happy for this one. I'll put a link to these in the, um, in the description on the off chance you want to take a look at them. I've got one PC game. Uh, my local um, Metal Goblins, uh, Metal Goblin Games um, in Pepperell, Mass. He hooked me up with a couple of things. He got me these these um, 2600 games, and he hooked me up with the PC game, CSI Crime Scene Investigation. I love this type of game. I know it's sort of an acquired taste, and I've done a review on one or two of this style. I really dig this. I've played this game, or this this type of game for the, the CSI franchise. I played it on... Um, a, Nintendo DS. I've played them on PC. I've played them on pretty much any system I can get my hands on. I got a copy of one of these for an Xbox. I mean, I think they're great. I, I really like it. So, three discs plus it's got the manual in it. So, everything is there. And, of course, this was... This came out... This particular game came out during a time when 
you could hand off this PC game to a friend and they could play it. Um, a couple years after this came out, they started to go to specific types of keys. So you would, once you got a game, you'd, you'd type in the key off the back into the internet and basically you were the only one that could ever use that game. So this was, this was sort of right at the edge of the era of being able to just take a disc, pop it in a machine and play it. And then it just became, after a while, you know, you can't even... I wouldn't even pick up and attempt to buy most PC games at flea markets. You have to know what you're looking for, and you have to know that if it has a certain key on the back, it's probably just useless. But like I said, this was from before that. All the game, the entire game, is on the disc, so you can just play it, which is so fantastic. And I'm a huge fan of the franchise and a huge fan of this style of game, so it's pretty awesome. Here we move on to some... Uh, we're going to move on to some Switch games. So, pile of Switch games, they've been, <laughs> they've just been accruing. I get one every couple of weeks sometimes, mostly because I order things from Limited Run Games, and it takes like a year for these things to come in. So, they've started to get here. Let's see. Yeah, I think a bunch of these are probably from Limited Run Games. Well, this one is for sure game called Pathway. It's some site, some sort of a pixelated adventure game. You make some sort of a party, I believe, and then you go on an adventure. Can't say I know much more about it than that. I know when I ordered it, it looked good enough. So, curious to give this one a go. Now, this one I can admit is a little questionable. I probably wasn't paying attention. I got a copy of Axiom Verge 2. That's not a problem. I have Axiom Verge 1, and I've been playing it on um, PlayStation Vita, and I love it. No reason to not think Axiom Verge 2 is just as good. The questionable part is, well, I accidentally also bought the set of Axiom Verge 1 and 2. So, technically, I've got duplicates here. Well, maybe that wasn't the smartest thing, but, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Axiom Verge, so I'm glad to have it. It comes with a manual, and actually, it comes with limited run trading cards. And they have one special for most games that they, that they manufacture, which is great, and I try to keep those in the cases, so... Finally, happy to happy to finally be able to play Axiom Verge 2. That should be great. We'll get that going soon. Quake. I never played Quake. I played Doom. I played games around it, but Quake was never my thing. I just, I guess I wasn't playing a lot of PC games at that point. But it's wildly popular. And what Doom did for first-person shooters, my understanding is Quake took it and pushed it further. It pushed it in a good direction. So, grateful to have this in the collection, be giving this one a go, learning what it's all like to play Quake from back in the day. Excellent. Uh, I think I got this one off Amazon, Pac-Man Museum. It was like 25, 30 bucks. It's a nostalgia thing. It's Pac-Man. How do, how do I not get Pac-Man Museum? It's got 14 games, and out of those 14 games, how many of them are good? Well, it, no matter what, it's just Pac-Man. I mean, when you're in the mood for Pac-Man, it's just Pac-Man. So, we'll take it. Got a game called Infernex. Um, now, this one's interesting to me. Some sort of a fighter. I don't know much about it. We have an adventure going on here. I know it's black, white, and red. It had an interesting color scheme. It had a cool title. It had a cool, I don't know, a, a cool box here. It looks interesting enough to load it up and give it a try. So, that's how I ended up with Infernex. Now, this one I was really happy to get. This is Crisis 3. Now... This is a first-person shooter, okay? Obviously, there are three of them. Now, the first Crisis game, when it came out, it was it was so good at the time, I remember. This was a time when this game was used as a benchmark as to whether or not a personal computer was good for games or not. They would run it, and they would say, this plays Crisis. I remember seeing those ads. I remember seeing those discussions. And Crisis, it became a series. And I, I don't think it's had an entry for a couple of years, but obviously we have a few different versions of the game. Um, First-person shooter, you're a guy in basically a super suit that's doing, you know, running through an adventure, shooting things and getting new weapons and upgrades and what have you. And it's it's pretty awesome. So to get number three, I, man, it's been a long time since I've played one. I'm not sure if I've ever played two, but three for the Switch, be able, being able to use a controller pretty excited about that. Okay, I'm going to go through a couple of, I guess a couple of random ones. I was at a booth at a flea market. I think I paid five bucks. I got like four or five games out of this stack. Um, 
one of them was Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop for the Wii. I haven't popped the Wii on for a while, but I did play Dead Rising a couple months back. Might be interesting to play one with the um, with the Wii controller. See where that takes us. A couple of PlayStation 2 games. Jack and Daxter, The Precursor Legacy. Yep. Uh, people love this franchise. I've never played it, but price was right. I mean, we got a Naughty Dog game, so it's definitely got some quality there, which is which says something, I think. You know, have to give it a go. I Like I said, I've got no opinion on it one way or the other because I've never played it, but people do love it, so there's got to be something there. Street Fighter Alpha Anthology. I found a clean PlayStation 2 game for Street Fighter. It's got a bunch of Street Fighter Alpha games in here. I mean, for the price I picked it up for, it was not that expensive. And I think it was buy two, get one free even. I, I saw this and I just I jumped on it. I mean, it's a Street Fighter game. Y you know what you're getting. And if you like Street Fighter, which I do, fantastic. First person shooter called Project Snowblind. This one has a manual in it that is remarkably clean. We're talking no fingerprints at all. I wonder if this one was ever actually played. I mean, great condition. The pictures in the back look fantastic. Does that mean the game is any good? I have no idea. We'll see. But PlayStation 2 games, when you can find a PlayStation 2 game or three for like a buy two, get one free, finding that in a store doesn't happen that often these days. So when they when you do run into that situation, I like to jump on them. Okay, a couple of Xbox games. Tetris Worlds. I already had this game. However, I tried to pop in my game about a month ago. I wanted to give it a review, and it wouldn't work. So either I got a scratch disc, or um, or the disc is rotting. I don't know. But I found this in store for less than five bucks. I figured, you know, I do want to play this game something fierce. So I'll load this one up. I'll be able to play it again. Sounds good. Serious Sam. Another first-person shooter. This one is possibly a little more cartoony. But Serious Sam was reasonably popular. I mean, I remember hearing this game, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago when it was out. It was one of the it was one of the basic games you'd hear when you talk about shooters. You know, whether it was Duke Nukem, I remember Serious Sam, of course, Doom, The Quakes, all that stuff. First person shooter. Worth trying. Xbox 360. Civilization Revolution. No idea if it's any good. All I know is it was part of like <laughs> I paid five bucks for for five games, and this was one of them. Also, Castlevania II: Lords of Shadow, a Konami game, not expensive. That seems rare to me. Doesn't have a manual. Don't know if it's any good. I know it's probably nothing like um, a, a side scroller. I mean, I'm fairly certain it's a three dimensional game. However, it's a Castlevania game, and I mean, for the price that I got it. How do you not jump on something like that? Okay. Dead Space. Bestseller game with a manual. Platinum hits. I already have this game. But for the price, I couldn't pass up a copy of Dead Space. They're remaking this, apparently. This series is excellent horror survival in space. Excellent. So, pleased to get it. Um, I'll check, see if it's any better than the copy I currently have. Um, if it's not, I'll just put it in my trade pile. Somebody will want it somewhere. Okay, a couple of Xbox One games. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I've barely played the first Assassin's Creed game, but I liked it. And on that alone, it was worth me starting to pick up what I could find. So I probably got most of the Assassin's Creed games at this point. I just I can't say I've had the opportunity to put them in. They tend to be lengthy stays. You have to play them for a while, so... That's where we are. A couple more games. This was a big one, wow. Um, Minecraft Story Mode. Well, I was playing Minecraft before it was purchased by Microsoft. Back when it was just a game you went through PayPal to buy from this guy that, this guy that basically made this sandbox. I've been playing it since way back. Back when the original manufacturer, the guy that built this, had his funds frozen apparently because they wondered if he might have been a terrorist organization. And it was just, he had a video game that was selling really well. I think I paid 12 bucks for my original Minecraft game. Uh, the original one. This one, I actually paid a little more than that. I think I paid 15 or 16 But 
man, Minecraft has made some serious bank for Microsoft, that's for sure. And I believe they paid a couple of billion dollars for the game. So, um, happy to get this one. Pretty excellent. Probably not as interesting or excellent as the copy of Seven Days to Die that I finally bought. I stream this game and I've got it on another one of my playlists. Um, I've been playing it on PC for years, probably eight or nine years now. This game, this particular one, was frozen and it was it was sort of branched off by Telltale Games. They packaged it and they sold it for PlayStation, I believe, three or maybe not even four, PlayStation four and Xbox One. I've never played one of those versions. I know it it will be like me going back in time and playing an earlier build because they've made some significant improvements to this game over the past five years even. But I always wanted a copy on the system to see what it's like. Playing it with a joystick is certainly different than playing it with a, a keyboard and mouse. But it was probably the most expensive game I bought in a while. I paid like $21 for it. All these other games, I'm fairly certain I paid less for. Except maybe the Switch game, maybe the Switch games. Those tend to be $30, 40 bucks, But, um, you know, I paid 20 bucks for this one and I was just, I was elated to find it. And also, being an Xbox One game, I've got some really great Xbox One controllers I've picked up in the past couple of months. So, um, I'm going to be pleased to plug this one in and see what it's like. Um, I'll be curious to know if I feel like it's really limiting, or if it's actually as good as I'm hoping it's going to be. We'll see. I know I've played this one before, I just... I've been playing the game so long, and it goes through some major updates every year or two. So, I'll be rolling back the clock probably five or six years on this one. In the last couple of games, I got some PlayStation 4 games. A game called Beast Quest, I have no idea. It doesn't look like it's particularly awesome. It has this really goofy sort of cover art, I think. Um, some sort of an adventure game. Not a, uh, probably not a huge seller. And then, of course, the game's called Chicken Pulleys. Paint it red. I, I, I don't know, it was like 12 bucks. How do I not pick up a game called Chicken Police? I mean, seriously, they're... There's a rooster on the cover with the gun. I mean, okay, you have me sold on chicken. <laughs> Good enough. Great. Um, okay, and probably the coolest one out of the whole stack, to be perfectly honest. I finally got myself a copy of Resident Evil Village. I mean, <laughs> this game is its making greatest hits lists already. People love this. And I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. I just haven't bothered to get the latest game yet. But I got it now, and I'm certainly happy to have it. So we'll be plugging this one in, seeing where it takes us. I know a month, or, a month and a half ago, I spent all that time playing Resident Evil 4. Now I can play something even a hair, a hair more modern, which is awesome. So, great. Well, thank you for stopping by the channel. It's, thanks for hanging out for 23 minutes, it looks like, just to see some of the stuff I've been collecting in a pile. Uh, appreciate it. I'm going to start to get to some of these games. I'll be putting up some reviews, I'm sure, in the next month or so on some of these. Um, anyway, thank you so much for the support of the channel. Thanks for stopping by to take a look, and um, hope you have a good day, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.